production. Hi everybody, today we're going to be making a classic El Salvadorian dish, pupusas, but we're going to be doing my version of the dish. I know a lot of these other ones we've done more traditional uh, uh, recipes, but today we're going to do my own recipe for pupusas. So let's get started. My pupusa involves uh, pork, and so that's the first thing we're going to do. The pork takes a little while to cook, so we'll get that started, and then we'll come back and finish the video. Uh, I pre-prepared a little bit of onion and garlic and a little oil in a hot cast iron pan and we'll just start to sear those off. Don't go too crazy. And then I got some pork stew meat. It's okay if you get the tougher stuff because it's going to cook for a while and then going to get soft. And I also got some uh, pork uh, rib ends with bone to add a little bit of flavor as the slow cooks, okay? Uh, so while those are cooking down, we'll get the spice. Uh, you don't, you're not, we're not going to cook the pork all the way. We're going to just sear it off in the pan, and then we're going to go to the crock pot. The spice mix I use in my pork, garlic, salt, cumin, a little smoked paprika, chili powder, and then some uh, fresh cracked pepper, which we'll add in last. Okay, I just got the pre-mixed for you. This smells incredible. The cumin, the smokiness, the paprika, and the chili powder, mm, it, it's amazing. All right, we'll just be pretty liberal with that on the pork here. Liberal, liberal. This is gonna cook down, the flavors are gonna dilute, so you know, we can go a little crazy. We'll put our pork in. Put the uh, side you Season down because we're going to season the other side. Obviously, after this, you got to wash your hands, okay? And we'll spice the other side of the pork here. Wash the hands. Never forget this step. I've been a doctor for a while. I've seen plenty of cases of gastro. People doing barbecue on the weekends without washing their hands from the raw meat step to the cooking meat step. Get under the fingernails. Have you ever been in surgery? I have. You gotta get under the fingernails. Get clean. Look at that. You can smell just the pepper permeating the air. Oh, almost forgot. While well, it starts cooking, we'll throw in a little bit of fresh cracked. Things are starting to sear. Oh, yeah. Not quite. Turn up the heat just a little bit. This meat is a meat I uh, originally used to make tacos, a recipe we're going to do at a different time, uh, with more of a tender pork shoulder. Uh, and then this version I did for a stew I make, a hearty stew. And this this uh, version of pork turned into what I'm going to use for the pupusas. Um, it takes longer, but slow cooked is the best cooked when it comes to the meat, in my opinion except for steak. Uh, but this is going to be amazing. So again, all you really want to achieve here is a little, there we go, just a light sear on the pork. Nothing crazy, okay? We're not going for black on one side. Okay? 
and a, and a light cook to the vegetable. There, see right there, that's that's starting to be perfect. All right, that's bringing out the flavor of the dish. Now that we got the mirror meat seared off, you want to transfer it to a crock pot. Um, I preheated the crock pot too high, uh, so the temperature gets up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down for low, and we're going to leave it on low for about four hours to soften the meat. We want this meat to be very shreddable uh, to be able to put into the pupusas. On top of all that, I just did add a little bit of moisture and vinegar and a little bit more heat, just using whatever sauce you like. You can use a red sauce, but it's one of the vinegar-based sauces like a Tabasco. I think adds the extra layer of flavor to the meat here. You can obviously make your own, which I've done before, um, but this stuff ages for a few years and I think it's amazingly delicious. So just add a few squirts of that over the pork. So for the next step of our purpose is we need to prepare our beans. Uh, you can use any type of bean that you really like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but today we're gonna use the red kidney bean, uh, which I think has a lot of good flavor. Uh, to start preparing these ones, you can get them out of the can, or um, if you want to do it the classic way, you take dried red beans and you boil them for about one and a half to two hours until the skin just starts to peel off. So these are already been, we've already pre-cooked these, uh, and they are ready to go. They've cooled, and now we're going to do the recooking of the beans to add all the flavor. Right now they're, they're just been boiled. They have not really any flavor. It's just pure protein. Okay. So we're going to start again with a little bit of base. So we're going to use garlic and onion. If you want to add, um, if you want to make it a little extra flavor, you can use butter. Today we're just going to use a little oil, and we're going to start sautéing off our onions and garlic. Okay. When those start to become translucent, we're going to add in the beans and start letting that cook down. Okay. Uh, here in the microwave, I have just a little bit of chicken stock. Um, about half a cup is what you're going to need. You want to get it warm before you put it into the beans. So the onions and garlic are now translucent with a great spice mix. The smell is amazing. We're going to add in our beans. And just gently stir them, turn that down. Gently stir them and let them start cooking down. Mixing, mixing. Okay. Well, this is about a pound and a half of, of uh, the uh, kidney beans. All right. For that, you're going to need about a half a cup of the uh, cooking liquid, which today is just going to be a little bit of chicken stock. You can use water if you want to do a little bit more uh, rich flavor. You could do it with milk. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, get those incorporated and get start getting those warm through. All right. Now you take your hot liquid, just about half a cup. Add that in. All right, and then just stir, stir and cook. So the beans have cooked just for a couple minutes. That's all it takes because they've already been cooked once and they're now ready for smashing, okay? My son here, Elias, is gonna help us with that. Go ahead, Elias. Hey, here's my son, he's the other video. Yes, he is a great tortillero. He's good at using masa. So he's gonna gently push down. You can use a fork, you can use a potato masher. They just gotta get softened. And then you wanna start with the least amount of liquid as possible. You can always add more liquid. You can't really add, uh, take it away. If you do have too much liquid, the key here is just to add some more beans, all right? So my son's gonna start the crushing and I'm gonna start helping finish. Push, push, push. No, no, remember, soft, soft. You don't wanna splash this, that's boiling hot. Okay, we have all of our components together. We've got the pork and cheese. Pick whatever cheese you like. I'm using a little bit of pepper jack today. And if you wanna learn the masa recipe, that's in my previous video, okay? So we're gonna make the pupusa now. You take a good dollop of your masa more is better. You can always pinch off extra excess dough at the end. The pupusa comes from the word pupusawa. It's a pipil um, language word, which kind of meant thick, um, which is interesting because these ones are pretty thin compared to like the gordita in Mexico. Uh, and they originally, when they made this, um, 
it was all vegetarian. They're putting like flowers in it, um, and then with this arrival of the Spanish, of course, it, they added meat, just like every other dish in the traditional cultures that were originally vegetarian. They were made meaty by the, the Spanish. Not necessarily a bad thing, all right? So you just want to kind of flatten this out in your hand as best as you can, okay? The dough needs to be kind of a Play-Doh consistency or it's going to fall apart, all right? So flatten it out. I'm no expert, so give me, give me a break. I'm trying my best here, all right? Flatten it out in your hand. Flatten it out in your hand. Make a little pocket. I ruined it. No, I didn't. It's okay. All right. And you're going to take a dollop of your beans, put it in the middle. All right. And then some cheese on top of that. All right. A little bit more of this. And then your pork. A little bit of pork. All right. And then you're just going to turn it into a little basket of goodness. A little basket of goodness. All right. Get it in. Bring your dough around. This is the part here where I said if you have excess dough, you can just pinch off a little bit. I think ours is right on the good side, okay? And then just taking the heel of your hand, slowly, if you're an unexpert like I am, slowly flatten this out. Without trying to break it open like I am on this other side here. Slowly flatten this sucker out. All right. Keeping it together if you can. No one ever said this job was easy. Then once you have it flattened. Once you have it flattened, you're going to take it and you're just going to put it on your hot pan, cast iron if you got it, just a tiny bit of oil, and let it cook. Make sure it's all pretty even against the pan or you're going to get areas that burn and then areas that don't cook. And just be careful not to burn yourself. The pupusa really didn't come outside of El Salvador, in fact, it only it was in a very central city in El Salvador that was originally populated by the Pipil region. And in the 80s, like a lot of food that was come to America, Civil War in El Salvador, brought refugees here and then pupuserias popped up around. Same thing goes true with like Vietnamese food and pho. It didn't exist until the 70s, refugees flooded into America and then added this great cultural dish. So these things, classically of a native people, modified by the Spanish, brought here by war, this mixture of culture is you know, helped us understand one another, and the best way to understand one another is food. Pupusas are such a good dish that it's so classic, and it helps us kind of understand these people where they've come from. I love these things. They're freaking amazing. Uh, so once the side starts to brown a little bit, just get it up here. I see women in the pupuseria that we've been to just flipping these suckers by the hand. I'm gonna try. Oh, nah, I didn't quite get it. I'm trying to go for a brown on one side. Not quite there yet. We'll let the other side cook and we'll flip it again. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna let that cook. We'll show you the end result and then we're gonna eat it. Okay, here's the final product. And this is one my wife actually put together. It's much more beautiful as you can see. Um, so let's give it a good try here. I know this is a sin to some, but I like it. It's a little bit of green sauce. Pupusas are usually eaten with a tomato salsa and covered in a cortito and a little cabbage salad. The cabbage salad, honestly, I'm going to say is not my favorite. But it makes it a very well-rounded, nutritious meal. Mmm. Mmm, my gosh. Um, it's got protein. It's got grain, but the salad has a little vegetable. Whoa. Sauce on here. Mmm. Mm-hmm. My gosh, that is... Mmm. That was amazing. It turned out so good. Mm. That's a great meal. Yes, it is, Elias. It is a great meal. It is a meal. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Ooh, it for Pupusas. We'll see you next week when we come up with another delicious dish. Thanks for watching.